Hey, what's going on guys? Brandon here with Texas Plinking and we got another episode of Random Range Days. I believe we're on episode five. It's been about a month and a half or two since the last one. In case you guys are new around here, Random Range Days is when I collect a few different rifles that haven't seen their own YouTube video or I get some old ones from the past, uh, you know, from years ago. And we just feature them all in one video. So this here is interesting how this uh, ended up happening. So I've worked with manufacturers in the past to where, you know, big manufacturers want to send out some uh, something to showcase, something brand new. But uh, this was fun. This is similar in the sense, but I haven't heard of Night Stalker Precision before, and that's what this is. Night Stalker Precision LLC, the NSP-10, it's an AR-10, and uh, they're all about, you know, semi-auto precision out of these AR platforms. But the reason I say it's different is because I got reached out to via email by someone wanting to send me the NSP-10, something I haven't heard about before. And at this moment, it's actually kind of cool. They're small enough, not as well known, but maybe they're about to be once we see how it shoots, because so far off camera, it's looking pretty darn good. Uh, but they reached out over email at the point i'm making this video there you could reach out uh via email facebook and a phone number um so i'll go ahead and kind of leave that right here uh you know to obviously i was hooked up with a rifle so i want to hook them up with some exposure i think it's a pretty cool exchange but they don't even have a website just yet so they're kind of new and like i said not too well known just yet but so far it's looking pretty freaking cool um in fact as long as it holds together, based off what I saw off camera, if it continues to shoot well as we shoot long range, we might do 950 yards. And if I see really, really good results there, I might end up using it on the next episode of my long range challenge, episode 14, because I'm yet to hit it uh, with a semi-auto platform. Just a really, really cool looking rifle as well. Um, it's got a 22 inch forged carbon fiber barrel from Proof Research. Cryptic camo on some parts, gray some parts. The handguard is really cool, very long, but very light, because that too is forged carbon fiber. So ultimately, I know I put a pretty heavy optic on there, but still not heavy at all. Harris bipod on there. And I believe that is a Trigger Tech trigger, if I'm not mistaken, whatever it is, it feels really good. And you got a flow through suppressor. That is the Huxworks or uh, the my generation, the OSS, HXTI 762. We're gonna be shooting some factory ammo, Hornady 65 Creedmoor 140 ELD match. And a big thanks to CheapAmmo.com for supplying the ammo. They actually sent a few boxes of some other stuff as well. So really, really nice when I don't have to pay for the freedom pills. Definitely helps out the overhead on this channel. So CheapAmmo.com, check them out. I think we ran through everything we need to. Uh, so let's go ahead and see what the NSP-10 can do. All right, 526 yards. Let's try 2.9 mils. Wind seems to be pretty dead at the moment. All right, hopefully we can start center punching it a little bit better. a little bit higher. All right, let's move over to that silhouette to the left of it. It's on a slight tilt, so not getting all of it, but we'll try. All right, let's get real ambitious, try to get for that uh, eight inch popper to the left of that. All right, that is money. All right, 526 yards is a uh, child's play for this. Let's go to 770 yards. This thing's freaking accurate. That one that I let go, I definitely pulled high. I'm like out here with one hand trying to balance this thing. So at that point, I just kind of felt ridiculous shooting with one hand, but um, seem confident enough to place it and man this thing is putting it wherever that crosshair is right now all right let's uh end on a hit on that circle all right 950 yards we're gonna try 8.4 Definitely getting a ton of heat off the, uh, the suppressor because I'm seeing a mirage through it. So it's kind of like shooting into water. So a little tricky. We didn't really uh, hold off on the pace at all, but pretty cool. Tell you what, you guys probably will see an attempt at the uh, long range challenge with this thing. And if it was a dedicated video on this, I'd keep shooting it, but we got other rifles to get to. But 
You'll see more of this very, very soon. So let's move on. All right, change of pace. We're gonna run a semi-auto bullpup in 308. This is the new Desert Tech Wolverine. And as you can see, I set it up to be kind of like a mid long range thing, more like long range, because this is an Arcan Optic SH4J Gen 2. The exact same optic that was on the 6.5 Creedmoor version of the uh, Sabre 10 from a couple months back. Just to make the video a little shorter, we're just gonna blast it 100 yards. Also, I did shoot um, some Federal 175 grain uh, gold medal match at 100 yards. I didn't know what to expect from this. I don't know if it's a precision rifle. Desert Tech obviously makes bolt action precision rifles. As a semi-auto with the 20 inch 308 barrel, I didn't know what to expect, but it was definitely, uh, for me anyway, not really close to one in my way. It was uh, spreading quite a bit beyond that. So honestly, when I take it back home, I'll probably put a one to eight first focal plane low power variable on this to suit it better. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I don't really know if it's made to be a precision rifle or maybe I got to experiment with different ammo. But you know what? It zeroed in at 100 yards, so let's just blast at 100 yards. So yeah, honestly, it was a change of plans. I set this up with the scope thinking, oh, I wonder if how this semi-auto Desert Tech, the new Wolverine does. And I think I kind of mistasked it. Being a 20 inch 308, I thought I'd set up for long range. But I think ultimately, like I said, big old mag on there, dump the bipod, maybe a vertical grip on there, and then like an LPVO. And then uh, we'll have a more cohesive setup that way. Because even though it's a 20 inch 308, the weight balance is amazing because it is a bull pup. But these are replacing the MDRX. I have one in 5.56 and 300 blackout because they're still multi cal. So you could go 6.5 Creedmoor. Maybe that would have been the move for long range. I don't know. You can still go down to the short action stuff like uh, 5.56, all that cool stuff. Uh, but anyway, the new Wolverine. You guys will see it again soon in a more cohesive configuration, but blasting 100 yards is fine too. All right, moving on. All right, third rifle is going to be the DSI or Dark Storm Industries DS15. I featured this before, actually, fairly recently. Um, it had a more light avocado handguard. Uh, it was meant to be OD, so they exchanged that out for me. Uh, I thought that looked kind of funny in the other color as well. Main reason it's coming back though is the this right here. I made a video review on this Arkin Optics Zulus, which is a digital night vision scope for under $500. Once you use a coupon code, it's like $479, code Texas Plinking anyway. But I haven't mounted on a rifle just yet, and so I had a lot of people asking if it could withstand the recoil, which I'd imagine it can because it is a scope for real firearms all right so we're combining two things dsi 15 mfr modern fighting rifle with the zulus and the reason as you can tell it is not the night but it's digital night vision so you could go between day mode and night mode right now it's in day mode and cool thing with digital stuff is i actually can record from here i have got internal recording so i'm going to be able to use that and display it uh, when i get home that being said first impressions with the optic on a gun so it may not be zeroed in. I'm gonna to try to shoot it uh, offhand here at 100 yards and we'll see what happens. All right, it's zeroed in. And uh... All right, I know it's a digital night vision scope, but you know, it's got a day mode, so that's all we're doing. But it's the same zero and it'll hold the zero. So I figured I'd throw it on a rifle and see how I like it. So kind of a first taste there. All right, first of the pistols is the new Canik and Terran Tactical collaboration, the TTI Combat. Based off my experience with the SFX rival in the past from Canik, that thing was freaking amazing. That was a lot of just fun, recreational kind of shooting because it was developed by competition shooters. This one did it a little bit extra um, because it's got a compensator built on the top. I think that's within the barrel itself. And then this kind of just shrouds around it. But it's got a ported barrel. As far as what makes this different from the SFX Rival being the Terran Tactile TTI, if it's simply the color and the Terran Tactile logo and the ported barrel, that's enough by me because the price difference actually isn't all that much. They start at $999 or MSRP and they go to $1,150 if you get this mechanic red dot on there as well. Pretty cool. I mean, the trigger on the SFX Rival is really good as well. And same here, which is crazy to say because we're talking about a strike your fire pistol under a thousand dollars just barely under to be fair and so yeah really really cool anyway here's the extended mag here we're still looking on here We've got the flush fitting mag all kinds of different grips here's where the red dot was but i already mounted it but it's cut for it as well this tiny little pistol here is actually a tool set within the grip itself you got all these little heads uh for you know what you might need for the gun or optic and then you put it in this little bit right here all right then we got another layer here and it came with all of this minus this light, mind you. 
Uh, you got a holster, got a speed loader, challenge coin, all that kind of stuff. All this more tools and tools cleaning kit. Um, I'm adding this light and I put it down there just so that way it fits in the, uh, you know, cut foam. Not bad. All right, let's move over to the silhouette at 100 yards. I'm going to have to calm down here. No idea. We'll go back to this one. Man, for a polymer frame striker fire, it feels really, really good. To be honest, though, I think uh, a lot of the cool factor is just the Terran Tactical collaboration with the color scheme and the logo. But compared to this and the SFX Rival, really not too much of a difference. So, All right, Springfield Armory 1911 Emissary. It's a gun that's been out for like two and a half years uh, in silver and black. Uh, they just released it in all black. That's all the change is. My other one's in 45 ACP. This one's in 9mm. And there's different lengths as well. This is the government 5 inch. But a 1911 and 9mm just doesn't kick all that much. Um, this has got the classic Springfield Armory kind of like U rear sight. I'll be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of that. Uh, usually I take some Sharpie and kind of black out the bottom of it just to get like two white dots again. Um, trying to make it my friend here, but once again, kind of limited on targets. Go for that one in the middle of a field, right in the grass there. Just five in the mag. See if I could get anything done at 100 yards. All right, lastly, the Mossberg Brownie. I didn't know too much about this thing. Um, I was at an auction in Oklahoma and uh, impulsively bought it, I suppose, without really knowing what they're worth. Ended up paying 500 bucks for this thing, but it cracks open. Show you the back side of it, and then knowing that it's clear, I can show you guys the ports of it or the barrel. Uh, four barrels on it, chambered in 22. But yeah, a little break open, little pepper box looking thing, put four rounds in here, and it pretty much becomes semi-auto for those four rounds, uh, but not semi-auto in that it cycles. It's just that the striker rotates one, two, three, four as you pull the trigger. So mechanically it becomes something as if it's semi-auto, but not truly semi-auto. Hope that made sense. Also, once you shoot all four rounds, you take your little tool here as if it's like a Blackberry, and then punch out the casings all the way through and then put that back away here. Really interesting little thing. Four shots of 22. Will it close? Oh boy, barely. All right, we're in business. All right, they're only subsonics. I'm still slightly scared. Oh no. Oh. Come on, shoot their first run, let's go. Dang it. All right, all four there. It has to go through its like whole round, then it strikes it hard enough. So I wonder why that is. That one fit nice and flush. These kind of aren't, there it goes. All right, so, so far it seems like it has to run through one, two, three, four, then it shoots one, two, three, four. Now we'll shoot. shoot. I wonder why that is. I think Mossberg engineered it to where they have four chances to be like, oh, he's not really gonna shoot us. They hear a couple clicks, they have to question themselves whether they really wanna mess with the brownie. Little show of force before the violence gets dealt with. Gang, gang. All right, guys, so that does it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. And again, thanks CheapAmmo.com for supplying the ammo for the 6.5 Creed more, despite other ammo too that we'll use in future videos as well. But that about does it. Thanks so much for watching. See you guys next time.